Today we are going back to the basics to review the fundamental camera settings. Basically, we're going to be explaining my shirt. Let's get to it. Hello, I'm Noah from Anything Cameras, the channel that focuses on helping you improve your filming and photography. Let's jump right into it with shutter speed. Shutter speed is the number right here. 125 is the number on the shirt, but the number can vary depending on how you have the shutter speed set. Shutter speed is just how quickly your shutter actuates. In other words, how quickly the shutter goes down to block the sensor and then comes back up to allow it to take another photo. This is measured in seconds or more commonly fractions of a second. So for example, you might have a shutter speed of 1 1 25th of a second, which is what the 25 is referring to. There's just not uh, a one and a slash to represent the fraction in this case. Or you could have a shutter speed such as 1 60th of a second or 1 8 thousandths of a second. Or if you're doing long exposure photography, you might have a shutter speed of one second or multiple seconds. Sometimes in astrophotography, which is photographing the stars, you might have a very, very long shutter speed of up to 20 or 22 seconds. For photos, where you set the shutter speed depends on what you are shooting, how much light you have, and a couple other factors. Shutter speed affects two things, motion blur and exposure. Motion blur is blur in the image caused by, well, motion. This could either be the camera moving or the subject moving. Motion blur occurs when the shutter speed is too slow, because when the shutter speed is too slow, it lets in more light, and if something travels, it sends light to your eye or to the camera from different locations, depending on where it is in its travel. Therefore, if the shutter speed is too slow, such as one fifth of a second or multiple seconds, or even sometimes one one hundredth of a second, this will let in light from essentially multiple locations, making the subject or whatever else is in the frame blurry. And exposure, which is the other thing that shutter speed affects, is just the brightness of the image. When the shutter speed is slower, it lets in more light making the image brighter, and vice versa. How you set your shutter speed in photo depends on a number of factors, including what you are shooting, how much light you have, and a couple other things. If you would like a guide to setting shutter speed for photo, then check out the video we have on the exposure triangle in the cards above. The next one is aperture, and that is this number right here f5.6 in the case of my shirt. Aperture is measured in f-stops, hence the letter f in front of the 5.6. Measuring aperture in f-stops is just how we denote that the number is referring to aperture. So aperture is the iris in your lens that lets light through to the sensor, and this is the second element in the exposure triangle. Because as you widen the aperture in your lens, you're letting through more light, and as it's smaller, you're letting through less light, making the image brighter and darker. The other thing aperture affects is depth of field, which is how much of your image is in focus. Right now, I am in focus. However, if I were to stop up my aperture, which means to increase the aperture number and make the iris in my lens smaller, not only would the image get darker, but more of the background would start to be in focus. If I move all the way back here, you can see that the background is more in focus than it was, but I'm still what is in focus. And as I move forward, the background gets blurrier. Again, if you want a more in-depth explanation of aperture, the exposure triangle video in the cards above. The next one is ISO, which is this number right there. ISO 400 is what it says on my shirt. ISO is the last element of the exposure triangle but this element of the exposure triangle differs from the other two because it is not physically giving the sensor more light. Instead, it is amplifying the digital signal that the sensor receives to make the image brighter. Because of this, there is a huge disadvantage to raising the ISO too high and making the image brighter that way because as the signal is amplified, it lets in digital noise. Digital noise is the grainy stuff in an image that you might see if it is shot in a dark location. You can see it here in this image, whereas this image I stopped down the shutter speed to let in more light and therefore was able to set the ISO to a lower value, getting a cleaner image with less amplification and therefore less digital noise. The next setting we're going to cover is exposure compensation. Exposure compensation, despite what it might sound like, is not an element of the exposure triangle. 
because it does not affect how much light your sensor receives or how that digital signal is amplified. It does affect exposure, but only when the camera is auto exposing. This is because exposure compensation only tells your camera how bright or dark to expose the image. If you have an exposure compensation of say minus two stops, your camera will take its best guess and expose the image two stops underexposed. Stops, by the way, is just a measure of light in an image. If you have a manual exposure set and the camera is not controlling shutter speed, aperture, or ISO, you may still be able to set a different exposure compensation, but it will not do anything because it does not affect the exposure of an image. It only tells your camera how to expose the image and your camera isn't exposing the image when you set everything manually. Battery is pretty self-explanatory. It's just how much power your camera has left. This number here is how many shots your camera has left based on how full the card is. The card in the camera is an SD card or sometimes CF Express card, and that is what stores the image when you take the photo. Here we have white balance. That's what the WB stands for, and the sun symbol is what the white balance is currently set to. White balance is how your camera balances different colors in the image, primarily yellow, blue, green, and magenta, so that the white areas of the image are white. And likewise, the gray areas of the image are gray, and the black areas of the image are black. The sun means it's set to a daylight preset, which means that the camera will set the white balance for daylight. This right here is a flash setting, which is really a topic for another day, but I do not recommend you use the flash on your camera. Over on this side, we have the image quality. Raw and fine means it's taking two different types of images. Raw images, which is an uncompressed form of the image that your sensor sees, and fine means it's taking a high quality or fine quality JPEG image as well, which is a compressed version of what your camera sensor sees, which has a smaller file size, but does not have as much information or flexibility in post-processing as does a raw image. Post-processing, by the way, is what it's called when you take the image into your phone or computer and edit it, such as the brightness, white balance, crop, really anything. However, JPEG does not affect resolution unless you specifically tell it to, Therefore, it would not affect crop, because in crop you are not altering the pixels, you are simply removing pixels. This symbol right here is a camera mode, or at least I suspect it is, because I'm not actually sure. See, different companies have different symbols for different camera modes. Usually it's a letter, such as M for manual mode, A for aperture priority, or a V for aperture value, which is the same mode, just branded differently. But I'm not really sure what that letter or symbol is. Camera mode is what mode your camera is in to set the exposure or to take photos or videos. Manual is what it sounds like. You set all the elements of the exposure triangle yourself, but you do still have the option to set ISO to auto and only set the aperture and shutter speed manually. Camera modes is a whole nother video in itself, so you can see that in the cards above. But there are also settings that aren't on my shirt, such as picture profile or picture setting. It'll be called something like that. And that is how your camera interprets the colors and contrast of the image when outputting to a compressed file type. That could be basically any video file that isn't raw or any photo file that isn't raw. Usually you'll see that in JPEG. In RAW, it's uncompressed and unaltered, so picture profile or picture settings, depending on what it's called in your camera, will not affect that. There are also focus modes, such as autofocus or manual focus, and this is what it sounds like. In manual focus, you turn the focus ring yourself. In autofocus, the lens and camera do it for you. Then there are also video settings, such as mic levels, which is how much the camera does or doesn't amplify the audio signal coming into it from a microphone on the camera, or a microphone that is plugged into the camera. That's all the settings I'm going to cover for today. If you would like a part two to this video, comment down below and comment some of the settings you are confused about. Thank you for watching and click right here if you want to keep watching. YouTube recommended this video for you, so it should be pretty good.
This lets in light from... The next one is Aperture. And that is this... It does affect the... It does affect... It does... 